Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, in this video, I'm going to talk you through how to level champions as efficiently and effectively as possible. A lot of people have been asking me, especially on my free to play, but in general, like how uh, how do you level champions so quick? How have you got so many six stars already? And what tactics do you use? So I'm going to start from like a really basic element, and I'm going to move on to um, more kind of end game ways to level food as well so let's start with the real basics so when farming food in campaign you need to try and make sure you're doing it whilst you've got uh, xp boost on and you see here so this is a, my free to play account i'm 53 odd days in uh, 54 or something and i have never had a time when xp boost is not on so far and i've still got what two weeks and a day of xp boost literally in the account good to go so once this runs out and i guess for people that play less actively this runs out more quickly and then i get the question should i farm champions without xp boost on it's way less um efficient so you see here i gain an xp boost of 100 percent whilst it's on and you can kind of top it up i guess if you're not playing actively it falls off eventually but you do get xp boosts through things like uh, completing your weekly quests you never want to stop doing the dailies get the weekly quest done get the xp boost the advanced quests you get the xp boost for three days i've done the advanced quests just about every day since i unlocked them with the exception of if there's something like beat a faction war boss everything else i can do every single day and you can see this is already my second epic book on the free to play since i unlocked advanced quests which is kind of nuts. They're, they're actually a really good source of everything. Energy for getting your food. Um, food stuff going in campaign, which we'll get into. But yeah, the XP boost is massive. So if you see things like tournaments and events where there are XP boosts available. I don't know if we've got any that I can show you here. Um, we've got one in here, but I wouldn't suggest a summon rush is like the right place to go to. But sometimes you get them and they're kind of like, I don't know, second tier down. Try and make sure that you push yourself to be able to grab those extra XP boosts because it makes a massive, massive difference when you're farming your food. Double. It's double. <laughs> when you start this game, I'm going right back. You're going to be starting on normal campaign. You need to fly through campaign as quick as you can. You don't need to three star it all. You just need to beat it. Okay. You beat normal as quick as you can. Um, most people will get stuck around uh, stage 10, stage 11. Probably means that you need to. Um, just go back and do a bit more farming, level up a bit more gear, and then come back and try again. But normal campaigns should be done pretty damn fast. You will do it with the starter champion that you get. So if you started with Kale, Elhane, doesn't matter. Those champions that you start with will be able to beat campaign eventually on their own. But certainly with the other couple of champions that you get, like um, like the Archer Girl Sniper, uh, those two together will be able to get through campaign. And your aim is to beat normal as quick as possible, beat hard as quick as possible, and then get yourself to brutal. This is like where it starts to make some sense around farming food, okay? Brutal campaign is kind of your farming stage. Now, for those that are earlier in the game, and I'm talking about similar stage to where my free-to-play account is now, day 50, uh, I've started to get some gear, but still need a bit more basic gear, you will spend a lot of your time farming palace of arabia and um vladimir strait yeah these two areas give you gear at the same time as leveling food efficiently once you don't need gear from these two places and and why 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 here let's just talk about it for a second i want speed gear and i want life steal gear early on in the game and i actually want specific main stack gloves chests and boots from these areas they're hard to they're hard to get if you go to dragon and you won't get good gear early on so you want to be farming stage four five and six uh initially and get yourself gloves with a crit rate main stat hp percent main stat and defense main stat four star or five star gloves chests with hp percent defense percent and attack percent main stats and then boots with speed okay you do it on on um, palace of arabia then you do it on Valdemar Strait, 
And then once you've done that, done that, the next stages you will farm are the boss stages to try and get rare gear in those sets. So what you're doing is you'll be farming food at the same time as farming gear. Okay. Let's talk about farming food then. So once you've kind of got yourself into a rhythm that actually you want efficient farming, the best place that you can farm food uh, in the early game is going to be stage 12, 3. Okay, you get slightly more experience in stage 12, 6, but 12, 3 is where you get the best um, silver to experience ratio for your energy you're going to use. And the dream, and what you absolutely should be doing, is you should have one champion as your farmer, and then you should have three champions as food. Okay, so it can be any champions that you're not intending to use later on. That's what food is. Don't throw in there a load of champions that you just want to level because what you'll find is you end up getting a load of champions that are level 40 or 50 and they're so weak compared to a level 60. So your absolute aim is to get more 60s, more 60s, more 60s. You do it by putting food in like this. So if you put three food in, I'll show you. Basically, there's, there's one experience number per level, and it gets split between all champions on the level. So if you've got someone who's already a max level, like my Kale here, he's still getting a quarter of the experience from that stage, even though he's max. Yeah, so if you were to put in um, Kale with one other, they would still get the same experience number spread between them, but it would be halved. So half of that valuable experience will be going into someone who's already max. You see here, eight, five, eight, six, five, two across each of these three, Kale would have just got 8652 experience as well, even though he can't gain any experience. Yeah, so this is why you, put, uh, you try and get the point where you get three food, because if you had two max levels doing this, or two people that aren't gonna gain levels doing this, you're wasting half of the experience um, when actually you just wanna waste a quarter of the experience. So that's the basics of, of starting out. And you can run macros. I run macros on black, um, blue stacks, which enable me to farm stage uh, level two champions, level three champions. Uh, I've got a video on that, which I'll ping at the end. But um, blue stacks is actually really useful for this type of thing. So you continue to run this 12-3, um, gaining your experience until you level people out. Yeah, and ideally what you want to do is save your food champions, see all these 20s I've got here, until there's a champion training event. With level twos, often you overflow it quite quickly and you're going to have to go to the tavern and upgrade some of them so that you've at least got enough space to continue to grow food. So, you know, level two is fine outside of a champion training, but a three star moving up to a four star, a four star moving up to a five star will be valuable um, when you're trying to get in those champion training events. So you see here, I can just pump some of these up to three star. You'll also see I've already got a whole sea of level 30s ready to go um, for the next upgrade, yeah? And then once you've, once you've kind of made yourself some more room, you can go into um, the summoning portal and just summon some mystery shards. And I'll show you what I tend to do with with the kind of lower level mystery shards. So just make a little bit more room. See, I'm never um, feeding in people that have got experience already. They're already kind of running down the mill. They're already kind of getting involved. So no reason to waste the experience you've already put into those champions. Okay, so let's talk about mystery shards here. Mystery shards are kind of like your source of food, mainly. Don't be, don't be using all of your epics and rares for food unless they're duplicates of a champion you're not going to use. But you pull your mystery shards, you'll get a whole bunch of uh, commons, you get a couple of uncommons, and if you're super lucky, you'll get a rare as well. And the rare then becomes either a champion you're going to use for something like Faction Wars, or um, if it's something that you just don't need, you could use it as food as well. So a three-star champion versus a one-star has already had a load of the food process done. So you see, what I tend to do at this point with my commons, my level ones, is I tend to take the common, feed one brew, yeah, one brew and three more commons, and that will give me a max level, level one, and then I upgrade the rank straight away and I make them into a level two. So I don't farm food with my level one champions. I always take them straight up to level two, um, and I basically start from two stars 
whenever I'm, I'm planning on doing food um, leveling. Uh, just talking about champion chase earlier, one of the other things that you can do is even if it's a food champion that you're going to use, you can actually take someone that you've just made into a four star. Let's assume this is a food champion. This one isn't for me, but let's assume it is. You can actually feed a couple of brews in early. Some people will even feed as many as three. Yeah, so for the sake of three brews and 21,000 silver, you take a level one right up to level 18, which actually, if you do that across a number of different champions, that will give you a lot of points towards a champion training event. So that kind of takes you to the next level of trying to be efficient with your food whilst also trying to complete things like training missions. Now, another good tip for uh, food farming early on for sure is starting to prep for other things that are coming in the game. So um, a mission that I'm coming up to is to fuse a Relic Keeper. Relic Keeper is a, a champion that you can get here. And I can see the champions that I need to be able to fuse a Relic Keeper. They're all farmable champions, actually. You've got four farmable ones here. Farmable, farmable, farmable. So what I'm actually doing at the moment is I'm food farming in um, Catacombs because I know that I need a Sorceress for that fusion. So I can keep running um, Catacombs, hoping to get the drop of Sorceress. Uh, yesterday, literally yesterday, I was farming, uh, yeah, here, Hallowed Halls, because I needed an Executioner. Okay, so that's, that's things that you can kind of prep ahead of time, getting the right rares from these, these different dungeons. And for those of you that are new, one of the best rares that you will actually use in the game, uh, where is she? Can't find her. thought she was here. Yeah, uh, the Deadlands is War Maiden. So War, uh, War Maiden's got an AoE drop defense ability, which you're going to need within your teams really quickly. So, um, you know, another good stage to farm is the Deadlands stage three, where, again, you're gaining shields, which you're going to sell um, at the same time as trying to get a drop for War Maiden. Now, you, you do actually gain experience outside of campaign. Um, and, you know, one of the areas is Faction Wars. So faction wars, I tend to never run just a, a, a clean team like this. I always try and put in a maximum number of champions, even if I know I'm going to do it easily, because although I don't get a ton of experience, let me show you on level one uh, so it's quicker. Although, although you don't get a ton of experience for doing faction wars, you do get a small amount and you can just take people up the odd couple of levels from beating the different faction war fights. So never run a completely empty team especially when you're early game and honestly do faction wars every single day because it's just going to give you that extra little bit of reward both in terms of leveling and in terms of actually gear drops that you, or potential um gear that you can forge in the forge so you can see here we're, we're just cracked through this is the weakest level so it's going to be the worst experience the higher you go up obviously the more you get but um you know just a, a little bit more experience coming in for food champions is better than having none at all. Now, when you start to get beyond wanting to farm campaign, I'm actually close to that on my, my free to play here. So I've got, what, four level, four six star champions now in 50 odd days. I've got a few level 50 champions, which are champions that I know that I want to keep. And then I've got a few others, which are level 40s, which are basically going to be faction war champions that probably won't ever become a six star. I just got Magna. You saw me get him right at the start of the video. He's going to be someone that I want to six star pretty quick because I know that he's going to be awesome for my account. And eventually he will be maxed out. So you can actually start to, um, you can start to farm experience in other places other than campaign. So a good example is potion keeps. Yeah, potion keeps generally are kind of easy content. You see here in 50 odd days, I'm on stage 17 already clearing stage 17 with a squad um, and the question you've got to ask yourself is can one of the squad come out can two of the squad come out the stronger you get the closer you get to towards kind of mid and end game you should actually be able to beat the potion keeps with maybe a three-man team and if you can do it with a three-man team then you can bring in two champions that you want to level and take them through the keep at the same time so not only are you still gaining the the um, potions at the end of it you're also gaining valuable experience for food and although it's going to slow your run down by quite a lot actually does it matter your experience runs out anyway so 
you know, don't think to yourself, I need the absolute fastest possible run. Think to yourself, how, how do I be more efficient with the energy that I'm using? Um, I'll just play this one through. Okay, so here we go. I mean, nearly finished it. It's going to take a good couple of minutes of time. Uh, but as I say, there's, there's only so much energy you've got. So in terms of completing the keep, I've done it with two food champions. And it's a couple of minutes versus, you know, in fact, that's my best time, weirdly. Um, but it's a couple of minutes versus perhaps, you know, maybe 30 seconds less if I had two other champions in here. But they've both gained uh, experience whilst we've, we've started to farm some more potions. So this is one area where you can absolutely spend your energy more efficiently by gaining something at the same time as gaining experience. Um, and it's a, really, uh, it's a really sort of valuable thing to do. So, you know, more of an end game tactic for people that can blow up Dragon really easily or Ice Golem or Finite or whatever is to still grind that gear, but do it slower and bring food champions into places like Dragon uh, as well. So you, so you start off by just saying, right, let's see if I can take one champion out. If you can do it, can you take two champions out? Uh, and eventually, there's champions like Eurodrim, where I've done a video showing him soloing um, Dragon 25, which is nuts. Um, and, you know, you're gaining four champions worth of experience whilst trying to gain the drops um, from Dragon, which is pretty crazy. Now, one of the other things which I like to do is Minotaur farming. I, I, I kind of I have to watch my language here. I'm not farming food in Minotaur. In Minotaur, I'm farming the actual champion I want to keep. So if I'm trying to gain scrolls, which I now do, I don't really buy um, masteries past the first three champions. Once I've got the first three worth of masteries, I can actually control where I want scrolls to go much easier. Um, so I know that he's nearly max. So let's do this. So Magnar again would come in, no gear on. I'm at the final stage of Minotaur, yeah? And I can actually come in and level up champions I want to keep and will use, and at the same time, farm scrolls for them. So what I tend to do is I tend to get someone to uh, early, uh, just literally just six star them. So level one uh, of a six star. And then I bring them into Minotaur, and I run all of their masteries at the same time. I, I run them right through end to end, uh, capping out there, capping out my energy to do it. It will actually take your champion from level one to about 43 to 45, yeah, whilst farming all of their masteries. So you're gaining all of the experience you need to get them towards the, the top levels. You're gaining all of their masteries, and you also gain a, a ton of silver at the same time. And silver's kind of one of the most valuable resources in the game. You'll also find that because you can do it with four champions, Actually, just bringing the guy in who's going to just die. You just saw Magna died there. It speeds your run-up, believe it or not. So you actually end up re recycling the fast champion's abilities quicker, which is nuts as well. And you can see here, honestly, people said to me, can you do a Minotaur guide? Honestly, it's, it's easy content. Like As long as you've got three level 60s, you should be able to do it with, with a combination of kind of any level 60s. It's, it's really easy. Uh, I would advise you've got at least one person that brings a drop defense just because it speeds it up a lot. Um, and then someone who's going to bring a bit, of, a bit of damage. But you can see here, again, for less than a two-minute run, I've brought Magnar in, who I want masteries for and that I want to level up. Don't bring any just food in here because they're going to have a chance of stealing a proportion of the scrolls that the Minotaur drops. So if you've got someone that you know you're not going to keep, this is not the place to to farm any of their experience. Um, but definitely for keepers, this is a good place to farm experience because you're farming scrolls at the same time. And it's all about being efficient with your energy that you've got. So you can see here, we've got 7,000 silver. Magnar's got um, some scrolls and he's got some experience as well. And you just play around with, you know, how many champions can I get this going on for at the same time if I want to? But honestly, I'd try and keep Minotaur down to one or two that need scrolls so that you're not spreading scrolls really wide. You'd much rather have scrolls in a kind of tight knit few champions than spread them all over the place. Okay, so let's just finish the video off then with a couple of things I wouldn't do. So I mentioned it earlier on, try not to f like massively burn tons of energy farming food when you don't have an XP boost on. Um, make sure you've got an XP boost ready for when you've got your big energy login 
reward. So you see you get XP boost or 500 energy once a week, uh, certainly in the early stages. I think you did in, in, in the previous stages as well. It kind of carries on, see, uh, right up to day 120. So make sure that you've got an XP boost ready for that. Um, don't just burn a ton of brews. It costs a lot of silver, actually, and it also is not efficient unless there's a champion training event going on. Store the brews, keep hold of them. They cost a lot of silver anyway, and keep them until there's a champion training event, and then do the technique that I said earlier on. Um, don't push yourself to go into Nightmare Campaign to farm food, because although you get more experience, the energy usage doubles, and it's a really, it's just not an energy efficient thing to do. So keep yourself in Brutal 12-3 for a good silver and energy balance. If you do get to the point where you can actually farm Nightmare Campaign 12-3 or 12-6, it's the most efficient use of energy for experience, but not great for silver. So on my main account, I do sometimes farm experience in 12-6 on Nightmare because I can. But if you can't do it using one uh, champion as the farmer, then there's absolutely no point. There's no point in spreading four lots of experience between just two champions that you want to get experience for. Um, and I guess one of the other things, if you absolutely need to level one champion fast for a reason, let's say you've got one day deadline on a fusion or something, you can just put one champion in alongside your farmer and he would get more experience than if there was four champions in. But basically, they spread the, the experience 50-50. So the Kale that's already maxed is getting 50% of that reward. And this dude's getting 50% as well. Instead of 25% across three lots of champions, you know, all of which should be food. So I'm just going to finish by uh, showing you how my farmer is geared. Uh, what I would say is you should crit cap your farmer. So try and get someone who's got either... A lot of AOE abilities. There's tons in the game now that you can use this with, but a starter hero is great, and then they only get better from there, really. Um, anyone who's got all AOE abilities can do this great. So someone like a Saurus, someone like a Bellower, um, someone like a Skull Crown, yeah, someone like an Ethos, they, they absolutely carve up campaign farming. Um, so you want to make sure that you crit cap your abilities. So you see here, I'm actually at 92%, but Kale doesn't need 100%. He only needs 85 to be crit capped for his AoE. Um, you want to make sure that they've got attack percent or uh, yeah, attack percent chest for any of those ones that I've mentioned. As long as their abilities scale from attack, attack percent is the way to go. And you can either do one of two things. You can either have someone who's purely a campaign farmer, in which case you slow them down and you give them attack percent boots as well. Or someone who's going to be like an all-rounder like my Kale here, you give them speed boots and you try and make them go twice for every time the campaign level goes. Um, after that, you're looking for attack percent, you're looking for crit damage um, to get your big hits away. So it's basically pump the attack up, pump the crit rate up to crit cap, and pump the crit damage up to get your campaign farmer doing wonderful things. So there you go, guys. I hope that's an interesting video. I hope it was useful. Um, if you've got any other comments or tips, post them below so that other people can benefit from those. I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.